It's one of those really lovely moments when you hear this for the first time. I saw this on the side of a mug the first time I saw this, that this here is the golden ratio. It's often um, called phi if the side length is one. And uh, when I saw that, I was, I was pretty surprised. And, um, and I sort of wanted to understand why that was. So I'm going to show you why that this is the golden ratio. First of all, um, I maybe like just worth pointing out where the most famous example of the golden ratio perhaps um, it comes in the Fibonacci sequence. So um, this is the start of the Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three. And to get the next term, all you have to do is add the previous two terms together. Um, so the next one is five, three and five is eight. Eight and five is 13, 21. Um, oh, I'll take one more. Uh, 34. I know the next one's 55, um, and uh, and so on. So um, the way this comes into the uh, the golden ratio is is because if you divide consecutive terms as we go along, they tend towards um, the golden ratio. Uh, and here we go. One divided by one is is one. Two divided by one is two. Three divided by two is uh, one point five. Three divided by uh, five divided by three is uh, 1.6 recurring. Eight divided by five is 1.6. 13 divided by eight is 1.625. 21 divided by 13, I'm gonna get a calculator for that one. Um, as a decimal, um, that is 1.6154 dot dot dot. Um, and I'll do one more, 34 divided by 21. Um, is going to be similarly disgusting. Um, 1.619, um, what have I done another? Yeah, I'll put zero, dot, dot, dot. Um, and, uh, and it goes on. And what you'll notice is that this looks like it's converging to 1.6 something or other, 1.61, 1.62. Let's do 55 divided by 34, just, um, just for the fun of it. Uh, 1.617, um, 1.6176, uh, let's say. Okay, and as we go further on and further on, these get closer to a number, and that number we call phi, because we can't write it as a decimal, it's one of those irrational numbers. Um, the golden ratio is famously, gives you the most pleasing rectangles. Lots of buildings are built in the, in the golden ratio, i.e. if the height is one, and you do a length of phi, then you get a beautiful rectangle. And one of the critical um, properties of, of the golden rectangle is that um, if it always divides into a square, a square, that's a pretty dodgy square, isn't it? Um, and a square and another golden rectangle, which would divide into a square and another golden rectangle and a square and another golden rectangle. I've not drawn this pretty well. And if you join up the corners, you get a golden spiral. There's plenty on the internet to uh, look at all of that. Um, if you want to know more about Fibonacci and the golden um, spiral, then knock yourself out. It's all over the place. But I'll show you the maths here about how we can kind of show um, that that is phi. That is one to phi is what we call the golden ratio, I guess. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is work out some of these angles around here. So uh, in a pentagon, I know that this is 108 degrees if this is a regular pentagon. I'll put one over here. This is all the sides are one. And this will be an isosceles triangle, and therefore these two will add up to 72 because that's what's remaining from um, 180. So there must be 36 over here and 36 over here. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another, um, I'm going to just with a blue pen, I'm going to draw another triangle. Uh, I'm just going to draw a line across there, and, and what I've done with that line is I'm um, going to make it so that this length is one. Okay. Um, well, I don't. This is I don't know this is phi yet, so uh, let's remove that. Let's call the full length instead of calling it phi. Let's call the full length x all the way along. Um, and I hope you are happy that if that's one, then over here we must have x minus one left over. Okay. Um, so what's the consequences here? Uh, well, if this is an isosceles triangle and this is length one, and I've just joined up this line to the point where, where it's one unit along, and that's 36, then these two angles up here, I'll go back to blue, th this angle here and this angle up here must be the same as each other, and they must add up to um, 180 take away um, 36, that's 144, so this must be 72. 
They're both 72. They are at 144 plus the 36, 180. Okay, um, so what's this angle in here? Well, that must be 108 because 72 and 108 is 180. And if that's 108 and that's 36, then this one up here must be 36. And can we check 72 plus 36 is 108? Very good. Um, so what we've got here is another isosceles triangle because 36 and 36. And if this is x minus 1 along there, then this must also be x minus 1 along there. So we've got two isosceles triangles. Now, I know this is a little bit messy, um, but have a, have a little draw of it yourself. Um, we've got an isosceles triangle that we started with, the, the large one. We've created a different isosceles triangle here with side length 1 and 1 and x minus 1. And we've got this smaller one over here. Now, what I notice is that the first isosceles triangle had 36, 36, 108, and the last one I've got is 36, 36, and 108. They are similar triangles, and therefore the ratio of the sides must be the same. So the large isosceles triangle, I draw it up here, the large isosceles triangle had side lengths 1, 1, and x, and the small isosceles triangle has side lengths um, x minus 1, x minus 1, and 1. And so if I do the ratio between um, the short side and the long side, they must be equal if they're similar triangles. So I'm saying that 1 over x must be equal to x minus 1 over 1. Well, um, if I multiply both sides by x and ignore the divide by 1, then I have 1 equals x squared minus x, which means 0 equals x squared minus x minus 1. And I can solve that. Let's use the quadratic formula. Why not? x equals minus b, 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 1, minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times minus 1, so plus 4, all over 2, which is 1. Um, well, I put, uh, let's, I'll put. let just think about the plus or minus for a second. 1, root 5 over 2. Well, root 5 is a bit more than 2, isn't it? So 1 minus 2, that'd be negative, and I know that x is not negative, so I, I can ignore the negative. Um, so x is 1 plus root 5 over 2, um, and that is phi. Now, uh, if you want a separate ex explanation for why phi is 1 plus root 5 over 2, um, then uh, you might have to have a look on the internet for that. I probably don't have time to get into that now. But um, phi is 1 plus root 5 over 2, and we've shown that this diagonal across there is 1 plus root 5 over 2 um, and so therefore x is um, is phi and the diagonal of a regular pentagon obviously this one over here is also the same as well a diagonal of a regular pentagon is um, is phi if the side length of the pentagon is 1 